If everybody could find their way to their seats, we'd like to get started. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jeff Brown, the new dean of the College of Business, and I'd like to welcome all of you to our college's centennial lecture featuring the CEO of Coursera, Rick Levin. Uh, we're also going to be hearing today from our president emeritus, Joe White, uh, Professor Madhu Viswanathan, and Professor Eric Reinfleisch, as well as our senior associate dean, Raj Eshambadi, uh, all of whom are going to be talking about different aspects of the changing dynamics of higher education and online education in particular. Um, I think you all know that online education is truly revolutionizing the way that content is delivered in higher education. Uh, massive open online courses, or as they are known in the industry, MOOCs, are just one element of online education in which the University of Illinois and our college are investing heavily. Um, I really believe that years from now, we're going to look back to this, the start of our second century as a college of business, and realize that this was truly the advent, uh, uh, just the beginning of a major movement into the use of online education tools as part of our portfolio of tools that we use to deliver education to our students. In fact, at this very moment, this event is being live streamed all over the world. Um, we're really entering an era of transformation, um, aided by creative use of technology and the internet, and fueled, as always, by faculty members and others who aren't going to settle for how we've always done things, but are looking about how we can do things newer and better in the future. And indeed, we really do have to press forward with this. I know that these kinds of uh, truly disruptive changes can be both exciting and at times uncomfortable. After all, many of us have been in the classroom for years, in some cases decades, and we've all you know, like to think that we've become masters of our craft. We know how to go into a classroom and engage with our students in a very meaningful way. And online education is really forcing us to think differently about how we do what we do. Um, but we are engaged in a competition, and that competition is not just with other business schools around the world. But as I learned in uh, China last week, uh, we have companies like Alibaba who are getting into the business of delivering uh, online education. Uh, there's discussions uh, over lunch today about McKinsey developing a lot of online content about management education. So the schools that we have competed with for the last hundred years, we will continue to compete with, but our universe that we are engaged with has grown. And we certainly have non-traditional sources of education that we have to think about how to keep ourselves not only relevant, but at the forefront as a thought leader. I really believe that schools that fail to embrace this change and figure out how they're going to excel within it are at risk of becoming increasingly irrelevant. Fortunately for us, we stand at this very moment on the forefront of this transformation. Uh, our online IMBA program, which we are partnering with Coursera to launch in just about two months in January, is really the first of its kind. Uh, we are going to be the, the, the first school to partner with Coursera to offer an online degree, and um, a fully online degree, and we're really proud of the position that we've created for ourselves, but we have to remember that this is only a first step. Uh, we're definitely not going to be putting this program on cruise control after we've developed it. We're going to have to continually invest in this program, continue to innovate, not only in the online space for the MBA program, but also think about the ways that this technology and the concepts of e-learning are going to help us deliver content in other programs as well as non-degree programs going forward. I think we're going to see that the space is going to continue to evolve at an ever-increasing pace and a very rapid pace at that. Uh, the good news is we are aware of it, we are ready for it, and our plan is not just to keep up with it, but to actually lead some of that change. So I'm really eager to hear Rick and our faculty members and colleagues uh, speak on this important topic. And I'd like to ask Joe White, uh, our President Emeritus of the University of Illinois and currently the James Towie Professor of Business and Leadership to come forward and introduce our speaker today. Thanks, Joe.
Thank you, Jeff. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this event, which is part of our ongoing celebration of the 100th anniversary of the founding of the College of Business. Let me begin with a fun item. I glanced at my phone on the way uh, down here from my office upstairs. I saw a news flash from uh, Rick, your new adopted hometown, Palo Alto, California. This morning, police stopped a car in nearby Mountain View for going 24 in a 35 mile an hour zone. It was a Google driverless car. They, they gave it a warning and sent it on its way. And uh, what really interested me was uh, the report that uh, in 1.2 million miles, these cars have had 16 small accidents, every one of them human error at cause in the other vehicle, which reminded me that we better keep using this technology to get smarter as humans. <laughs> Business education, like business, never stops innovating and changing, and that's what so many of us love about both. Our theme today is your professional success, what all of us need to know in the new era of online education. We're honored to have the single best teacher possible for this purpose, and to have a panel of our colleagues who are already deeply experienced in making quality online education a reality for our community and the world beyond. Let me first introduce our teacher, and then after his remarks, our panel members. Rick Levin is the CEO of Coursera, the world's premier provider of high-quality, accessible, affordable online education. He joined Coursera 18 months ago after a very successful 20-year tenure as president of Yale University. Rick grew up in San Francisco, graduated from Stanford and Oxford, then earned his PhD in economics. He spent 40 years at Yale as student, professor, including in the Yale School of Management, department chair, dean, and finally president. He is, of course, an author, including two books, one, The Work of the University, the other, The Worth of the University. It says a lot about Rick's passion for the power of education to transform lives, that instead of taking a well-deserved rest after 20 years as Yale's president, he plunged into new leadership duties at Coursera. He's been strengthening Coursera's partnerships with the universities, including and especially the University of Illinois, to bring the highest quality education to the largest number of people around the world. I think it's fitting that in this year of our centennial at the College of Business, we're on the eve of launching our IMBA program with Coursera. In so doing, we're fully embracing our land-grant roots, delivering an extraordinary education to all who have the ability and motivation to benefit from it with economic circumstances not being a limiting factor. Rick, I want to thank you for undertaking what turned out to be a sort of tumultuous and rigorous travel day yesterday in order to help us celebrate the centennial in an important and substantive way. Please join me in welcoming Rick Levin. Well, thank you all. Thank you, Joe, especially for that warm introduction. And uh, it's really great to be here on this uh, very special occasion of the 100th birthday at Yale. Of course, um, we know the meaning of these centennial events. We had our, I was able to preside over our tercentennial of Yale's founding back in 2001. So uh, it's exciting and you know, glad to have an opportunity. I'm going to talk to you, um, slightly modified the title, because uh, uh, actually, I want to talk about what it means to enable professional success uh, and to talk about the College of Business uh, as a leader in online education. And, and that'll stimulate the panel discussion, which will have a number of participants in the IMBA uh, effort that we're undertaking jointly, which is a truly revolutionary and exciting uh, uh, undertaking. Um, here's what I'm going to talk about. I want to say just a word or two about the century of leadership uh, uh, at the uh, uh, here at the College of Business. Then I'll tell you a little bit about what, how Coursera is trying to reshape the next hundred years and then how we're together through collaboration um, uh, enabling the, uh, the College of Business uh, and the university to take leadership in online education and then we'll have our discussion. So just a, just, just a, just a tip of the hat to this very worthy institution this has been an amazing, uh, uh, an amazing um, 
place throughout its first hundred years. Um, and you know, if you look at some of the bookends of the last 50 uh, leadership in the field of accounting that's been you know, persistent for a long, long time, um, right up to the modern technology of, in, of, um, of you know, bringing 3D computing into the, into the curriculum of a business school, which is a very cool idea that your that you're, uh, uh, 3D, pr 3D printing uh, uh, is going to revolution, revolutionize manufacturing and change the location and dispersion patterns of industry. So it's exciting that you're taking the lead in that. So lots of, lots of, lots of firsts in the school, and it's exciting to be with you as you launch yet another first in uh, online uh, MBA education. Um, and then, of course, academic leadership, and I, I just highlight here, you know, you, you were, had some of the seminal publications as the field of accounting was being, was being created as an academic field, uh, and, and now for, for a long time, you know, had the first PhD, and, and have consistently been ranked among the very top departments in the world, so something to be very proud of. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the promise of <clears throat> online education in the professions. Um, for one, the way we conceive of education at Coursera is that this is an opportunity for universities which, for the most part, have educated students in their formative years. You know, now it's true business schools more than other institutions have done continuing professional education through uh, executive programs and, and, uh, and so forth. But we, we see education now as a, as a, because of the ease with which one can access online um, materials, as something that's just going to be a lifelong activity. Um, and throughout a professional career, uh, our aim is to make that high quality professional education available to everyone around the world. It's people that couldn't, you know, couldn't possibly come here for an in-residence um, executive MBA are going to have access to, uh, to the IMBA. Uh, for example, um, we, we're we're developing, and I'll talk a little more about this later. But we're developing essentially, I think, a whole new market for credentialing. That's that's one step be, be beneath the degree programs, so that certificates for 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 developing competency in certain fields, I think, will now be seen as important signals in the labor market and help people advance, not just in business, but in many other fields. As well, in in uh, in uh, I mean, our our principal activities now in the professional areas are in are in business, computer science, and data science. But we're already seeing many companies uh, take seriously the kind of credentials you get just from completing a four course sequence um, uh, from a major university on Coursera. And then the next step up beyond beyond these specialization credentials, these these multi course sequences, of course, are degrees. And this is going to, in addition to, to, to um, just extending the reach of the university from your perspective, it's allowing wider access to people around the world and to people that are working full-time jobs in locations all over who now who will now be able to study for a degree uh, at someplace far away, but, but, uh, and, but that's very high quality and gives them an opportunity they would, might never have. So, that, that's one aspect, one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is we have a significant social problem it, with technology change in this country, as many have commented on, and there are some of my fellow economists who believe, in fact, that this is a critical factor in slowing economic growth in the United States in that there's a, there's a skills gap. There's a demand for lots of people with high skills, excess demand for those people, and excess supply of people with lower skills, and that's causing this the major cause of the increasing income dispersion um, uh, in our country and, and, in other, and in other developed economies. And so, so more and more jobs require college education or professional education. And we also know that people change jobs all the time. I mean, the, 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 the old notion, I'm uh, looking here at, uh, at Joe and, uh, and at Jeff, you know, these are folks who, who started their careers at big, you know, manufacturing companies, Cummins and Procter and Gamble, respectively. Now they did something unusual, which is they they turned to the academy. But you know, most of the people that started out with them at Cummins Engine and Procter and Gamble are still there. I mean, that, there was a generation where people worked for one company for their whole career, and and um, 
uh, today, it's, that's, it's totally different. I think of your graduates. I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they go out, they do something for two or three years, they move on to something else. I look at the resumes of people who apply for jobs at Coursera, you know, and these are people that are 28 years old and they're on their fifth job. You know, so, so um, th it's, that's not uncommon. So uh, it requires, you know, if you want to keep advancing, you have to upgrade your skills, and you get some of that on the job, but you're going to increasingly see people getting that through online education as they're working and using that professional credential to take the next step up and upskill. Um, you know, lots of employers think that college graduates don't, ha don't have enough to, to succeed in the labor market and this kind of ongoing education is, uh, I think, what's going to do it. And frankly, not just in the United States, but it's going to create access to much better opportunities for people all around the world. Um, Coursera's mission is to provide universal access to the world's best education and, and and we want to be, we want to be the place where you go to learn throughout your life. You know, I, I, one way I think about it is, <clears throat> Google is the place you go to search, and Facebook is the place you go to share, Amazon is the place you go to shop, and Coursera should be the place you go to learn. That that that, that, that whatever you want to learn about, it's going to be available over time, uh, 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 through great universities. There are our partners. Um, we offer. Highest quality content from 135 of the world's top 200 universities. We offer affordable credentials that are now recognized by leading employers, and that will increase, I think. We offer a learning experience that for many people is just beyond their wildest dreams. That, that people in developing countries that could never have imagined, you know, being able to take a University of Illinois course or a University of Michigan course or a Yale course, that that, that opportunity is now available to people. It's, it's, it, it, it's amazingly heartening what we hear from our learners about how extraordinarily grateful they are for the opportunity to get access to great education. And then over time, we're going to be hopefully adding other higher touch services, part of the Illinois a uh, college of business degree will be will be will be for the first time experimenting with much higher touch services um, you know direct interaction uh, uh, with uh, students and learners and um, in a, at a higher level than we've been doing so far and we, we we're eager to develop that capacity too um, this is our home page um, we, we're we're up to over 16 million learners and 1470 courses and and now 136 partners. It was 135 yesterday, so uh, I, somebody got added. <laughs> it's, it's growing. Um, we're at scale. We have 16 million uh, registered learners. Uh, we've had over 77 million course enrollments. Um, we, we have some real Coursera junkies, people who have taken 200 courses or more. Uh, quite, a, quite amazing. Um, uh, and, and, and now, you know, it's two and three quarter million course completers. I, I was visiting um, or visiting with the president and provost of Rice University about six months ago and showed them the, the number that 50, I think it was 55,000 uh, course completions on, on Rice University courses on Coursera. 55,000 55, people had completed, it was 55,000 unique individuals had completed course, courses on from Rice. And, and they looked at me and they said, that's amazing. We've only had 53,000 graduates in the history of Rice University. So um, it's a much smaller place than this. So, um, you know, it just gives you a sense of the scale. It's quite remarkable. Uh, we have diverse content of, across the map of human knowledge. We partner with 135 universities. They teach everything they teach. So we've got, you know, we've got technical stuff, you know, business and technology, but we've also got medical, we've got arts and sciences, philosophy and history, and the performing arts, and we have a whole set of courses that help with teacher preparation for, for school teachers. Um, uh, it's it's, it's a, uh, quite extraordinary. Um, our, we, <clears throat> we're, we're totally global. Most U.S. internet companies start with, um, uh, you know, with a U.S. business and then go market by market and, and develop their business in other markets. From day one, you know, you start as we did with Michigan, Princeton, you know, uh, Penn, and uh, and Stanford courses, uh, and and you know, from day one, we had a majority of learners from outside the United States, and 
and today it's 75% from outside the United States. It's, it's uh, quite remarkable, and, of that, and 45% from emerging markets, from developing countries. Um, the, uh, and we, the content comes from, as we just said, 136 partner institutions. I think about 130 are universities. There's a few others that are non-university cultural institutions. Um, and we have, you know, very top universities, about half of them from the U.S. and North, well, the U.S. and Canada, and about a quarter from Europe, and, uh, and another significant group from Asia, and now a new, an emerging group from Latin America. Um, <clears throat> the impact has been, frankly, surprising to us. There was a Harvard Business Review uh, paper published um, uh, in September that uh, that was based on a survey of over 50,000 course completers on Coursera, joint effort of um, Zeke Emanuel at Penn and Daphne Kohler, our co-founder, and their research teams. And, and uh, they showed that there's an enormous, you know, the, the, the people who complete courses report overwhelmingly that they got benefit from those courses. 80% of the people, 88% of those seeking educational benefits said they got it. 87% of those seeking career benefits reported that they got some. And here's the most astonishing thing. A third of the people seeking career benefits reported that they had had a material benefit from their involvement with Coursera. They'd either gotten a promotion, a raise, a new job, or started a business. To me, that seems staggering that it was that many people reporting that kind of material change. But it just shows what, what kind of doors you can open for people who, who uh, um, who uh, get to have the opportunity to take advantage of, of, of Coursera. The other thing that's interesting, the, the, the propensity to report a benefit is inversely correlated to social status and, and, uh, um, uh, and, and um, country. So in other words, you are more likely to report benefits and material benefits if you came from a developing country than if you came from a developed country, more likely to, to report benefits if you were relatively low income uh, than if you were relatively high income. And isn't this what we all want? I mean, isn't this the sort of thing that, that, that's hugely motivating for university providers to know they're really having a, an important impact on people's lives? Um, our current business model is, you know, we start with basic video content that's free to everyone. So people can access this without any charge and go through an entire course. Um, and if you want to be credentialed, if you want to actually get a certificate that certifies that you completed all the assessments successfully, you pay. These are usually priced in the range of 40 to actually as low as $29 in developing countries, up to about $95. Um, and, that, and that course certificate is a unit of, that's, that's meaningful, but more meaningful are these multi-course sequences. And frankly, from a business model point of view, this is a business school, um, monetizes much more effectively. So in other words, it's about a four times higher propensity to pay for um, for these multi-course sequences than for individual courses. Um, and so these specializations, which are three to nine courses with a capstone project where you create some kind of artifact, whether it's an analysis of a business case or a marketing plan or, or, a, or a computer program or a, or a software app, um, the, the, there's some kind of uh, final project. And that's been, so far, uh, what's been driving our are you know pretty considerable success so far in, in beginning to generate revenue, and actually we distribute half of our revenue back to our partners. Um, uh, in uh, it, it's more than that for the MBA program because they're doing more work, but it's but but, but in general, we distribute uh, on the courses and specializations. So it's a 50-50 split, um, and uh, that's that's been our business model so far. And what it's doing is creating essentially. A, a new credential that helps in employment. So um, you, we, a survey just showing that, that, uh, that, that many uh, employers are, are, are now or would consider using uh, MOOCs as a way of training their employees or are using them now as a criterion for hiring. LinkedIn um, added a field to its profile after Coursera came into, into being that allows people to report not just formal education, but certificates earned. And in just a very short time, um, uh, we've become the second most cited uh, certificate um, uh, it, it, of all in, you know, in, in the world on, 
on LinkedIn, Microsoft, which has been giving, had certificate programs in, in software for 30 years, is still ahead of us, but we've already passed Cisco, and we're moving up, but we'll pass Microsoft eventually um, as the most cited credential. And we have, you know, there's a button on our, every, when you get your certificate, you can, you know, push and post it on your LinkedIn profile automatically. So, um, and that's a way to signal into the job market that you've developed these skills. Um, so let me turn now, to that, that's a picture of Coursera, let's turn now to our collaboration and, and to what uh, the uh, university and the College of Business are doing and, and can do um, to advance online education. First of all, the university as a whole has been one of our most active providers of open uh, online courses. We've been working with Deanna Ranieri from the, in the provost's office from day one, you know, almost day one, they were, you joined early and, and you, you've done a terrific job. Uh, in participating, and, and now, of course, the College of Business is, is helping to develop uh, what's going to be really significant innovation, which is the online MBA. Um, looking at the university as a whole, you've had, uh, you have at the moment 35 courses and, uh, and, and an active pipeline, particularly here at the college. Um, uh, there have been over 2 million in, uh, enrollments in Illinois courses, 52,000 course completions. And, and about uh, 783,000 active learners, um, uh, uh, you know, engaged learners on the, on the platform. Um, and I, we added here the point that, um, that you know, for, the, for people that can't afford even the notional charge for certificates, we do offer financial aid and, and we have a significant uptake, um, uh, as you can see. And, and, you know, financial aid percentages, given the low price, pretty low in the United States, you know, maybe 10% or less actually ask for financial aid, but they're in countries in Africa, you know, it's 50% or more that are, that are uh, taking, essentially getting the certificates for free. Um, the College of Business is, is um, <coughs> uh, offering right now two specializations. I'm gonna get to the degree program in a minute, but, but there are two already out there, uh, in digital marketing and business uh, finances and operations. And already that's generated half a million enrollments and, and, uh, and about 8,000 course completions. And that, they, they were just launched in April, I'm thinking, or somewhere, yeah, April, um, or May, yeah. So they've, uh, and that's, you know, that's off to a great start. And then here's the big innovation which uh, colleagues from the college will be talking about in more detail um, on, the, on the panel. And that's the, that's the idea of putting this, our building blocks, which are courses and specializations together um, into a degree. So the IMBA program consists of a, a set of specializations that, that um, from which learners will choose six of the, I guess they're eventually be eight, six of the eight that, that um, uh, and, and complete those and then and then uh, there'll be an added layer of content available to those who apply to the MBA. So anyone in the world can take the specializations, open enrollment, uh, and anyone who wishes can use any specialization certificate earned as a job credential. It, something like digital marketing is, is it, itself a standalone credential because that's a new field and you know, training and that's gonna be important. Um, but stack them up apply for selective admissions to the College of Business, get admitted to the IMBA program, and then you get a new layer of content, more advanced material in each of the six specializations that you're, that you're combining for the degree with sort of higher touch services attached. So it's about, you pay $300 for each, roughly speaking, $300 for each specialization, at, that's you know $1,800 for six, and then you pay $3,000 for each for each high touch layer, that's 18,000 added up, it's $19,800. Basically, this is going to be an, a full-fledged MBA for essentially $20,000, which is a huge bargain. I mean, to, be, to have that kind of great education from a high quality business school. And we think it's gonna be a, you know, we think it's gonna be a home run. It's a great idea. Uh, it's really the first of its kind and and we love the idea that was, you know, invented here of sort of building on these building blocks that, you know, there's a valuable unit of, of, of educational content in each of these specializations that in itself is 
standalone, of standalone value, and then there's the opportunity to have a degree. The other thing that I truly like about this program, and it's so consistent with Coursera's mission of expanding access, is that when you, is that the experience of learners in the specializations prior to being, to applying for the MBA program would, would be an important criterion in admission. I mean, it obviously isn't now because we don't have that much track record with the specializations, but I think the intention is, is that, is that this is a, a route of access. So imagine a, a student who went to a third tier university in India and is working at an, at an employer that no one's ever heard of. This is, even if a person from that background had high GMAT scores, they would probably not get admitted to this, to this, to this university. But if they've taken courses from, you know, from the College of Business, done, you know, performed in the top decile of the, of the learners, and, and now apply, they have a shot at getting, at getting access to a high quality degree program without the kind of background and credentials that they otherwise would need. So it really is providing a huge avenue of opportunity for talented people around the world who would not otherwise have a chance. So I love it for the, for the outreach and for the fact that you're gonna be able um, you know, to create a new model that's convenient for people who are staying in jobs and wanna pick up that degree, but it's also really admirable for its potential social impact at getting you know, giving upward mobility to people um, around the world who might never have the opportunity. So we're really excited. Um, I, I, I take this from your strategic plan um, that we, meaning you, the University of Illinois, will be the preeminent public research university with a land grant mission and global impact. And I think the IMBA is a great start in that direction. So we're excited to work with you and, and really congratulate you for your creativity in coming up with this concept and your tremendous commitment to seeing it succeed. So thanks very much.